There we go. As Brita said, welcome everyone to St. John's Lutheran Church. It's good to see all of you. We are here for our Monday Thursday uh, worship service. Um, this is a part of our Holy Week uh, services. And so um, this uh, service um, will have some more uh, reflective and silence uh, with it. And also um, at the end, uh, we will be having uh, the stripping of the altar. And so things uh, will go black and silent at the end of the service. And so that will uh, officially conclude um, our worship this evening tonight uh, with the stripping of the altar then. So a big thank you uh, once again to our worship team, um, especially uh, to those who are um, on our altar guild with us here tonight. Um, Connie and Stephanie and Stephen, a big thank you um, for coming in and helping us uh, with our Monday Thursday service and all those who make this happen uh, every week for us. So our service begins with confession and forgiveness. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at the time of our baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Please join in singing our gathering song, Restore in Us, O God.
holy God, source of all love. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was a servant of all. Your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first read is from Exodus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head legs and inner organs you shall let none of it remain until the morning anything that remains until the morning you shall burn this is how you shall eat it your loins girded your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it hurriedly it is the passover of the lord for i will pass through the land of egypt that night and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup also, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, it is the strangest thing in the world to command love. For love seems to be a feeling that just comes over us. When we look at a picture of our spouse or our children or our grandchildren or our extended family and even our closest friends, immediately our hearts are filled with that warmth of love. It is almost like a chemical reaction centered deep within our biology. And after all, you cannot command a feeling. The saying is, the heart wants what the heart wants. And yet tonight, Jesus says to us, I command you, love one another as I have loved you. Now the love Jesus is speaking of is not a feeling, it's an action. Jesus is saying, 
act toward the world as God acts toward the world. And if you cannot see clearly how God acts towards the world, then act toward one another as I have acted toward you. Maybe adopt an attitude of caring. Help others to achieve their highest potential and good. Put someone else's welfare above your own. Because love is an action and it's not always this warm, fuzzy feeling either for the one who is showing love or the one who is shown love. In fact, sometimes when we help someone to grow in love, it can also be a very painful thing for both the teacher and the student. But its purpose is to aim at health and maturity of growth. And maybe loving someone can even be a thankless job. But remember that here tonight, Jesus shows love even to one of his closest friends that is about to betray him. And still Jesus counsels us to approach one another, not as superior all-knowing masters helping our poor inferiors to rise, but as servants walking humbly beside those that we are helping, setting them right, when they stumble, guarding their dignity and their pride as a human being who is just like we are. So perhaps this is why for the gospel writer John, the central act of the Last Supper is the foot washing. For a foot washing would have been done by the lowest person in their midst. It was an act of complete servitude. And oddly still, the disciples, and maybe we too, in some sense, do not fully understand what this whole foot washing means. Certainly, it is a lesson in humility, but there is more here than Jesus being a model of humility and service for the church to emulate. In Jesus's action, he is showing us what true love is. He shows us that the one who is one with God, who is worthy of our worship and praise, actually humbles himself and becomes obedient to the point of death, even death upon a cross. So tonight, we rest in Jesus' love, but we also look to the cross that is to come tomorrow on Good Friday, because it is not simply those nails that held the Son of God to the cross. I don't believe any physical nails could have done that. What held Jesus to the cross is the love that he speaks to us tonight. That love that he commands all of us to go out and share. Amen.
united by the servant love of God in Christ. We pray this holy night for the needs of our world. You call your people to hand on what we receive from you. Form all the baptized into teachers of faith from one generation to the next. If your church hunger for your promises in the sacraments and joy in receiving and sharing your word, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Your creation provides all that we need. Cleanse and protect the water you have given for washing and drinking, water on which all life depends. Sustain crops and herds that provide food. Teach us how to live so that there is enough for all. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You redeemed your people from slavery. Preserve people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression. Establish just leadership in place of tyranny and peace in place of war. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Jesus loved his followers to the end. Grant assurance of that love to all who need it. Those living with guilt, those struggling to forgive, those who are lonely or overlooked. Heal the sick, especially Sue Cochran, Marcia Coley, Judy Haycole, Mark Goldstein, David James, Nelwood Jensen, Merlin and Margot Johnson, Marge Kohler, Patty Cohn, Olivia Lake, Ned Lilich, Kingston McFarland, Dahlia Masoni, Jim Pearson, Jennifer Dominguez, Tom Rohrbacher, Kara Romanowitz, Bob Schwenke on his relocation to Texas, Dale Smith, Irene Swan, Harry and Diane Wolf, those who mourn the death of Billy Olives, sister-in-law of Elwood Jensen, Mark Alverson, son of Jim and Sharon Alverson, the family of Eva Gottlieb, and embrace the dying. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Jesus washed the feet of the one who betrayed him, inspired this congregation's ministry of service that we love as Jesus loved us. Give us renewed courage to serve. Bless the ministry of deacons throughout the church. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For what else do the people of God pray? I offer in prayer the ones that were hurt in Orange County the other day, today, the shooting and the loss of life there. May your peace be with those who are left and with the perpetrator that your love will perpetrate the world. God in your mercy. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Your glory shown in the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for generations of the faithful who have proclaimed our Lord's death. Unite us with them in hope until he comes again. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Hear these and all of our prayers, O oh God, in the name of the one who loves us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. 
We will now have our time of offering. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven, accompanying us in this meal, that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, you'll prepare your elements for Holy Communion. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our gracious God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, shed in my blood, for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Now let us come together and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom is power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So take your bread, crackers, whatever God has blessed you with this night. This is the body of Christ given to you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of the Holy Spirit 
that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This time we will now have the stripping of the altar. Reading from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you, they cried and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am worried and not seen, torn by others, and divided from the people. All who mock, all who see me mock. Let him live. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravaging and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all of my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breath. My mouth is dried up like a posture, and my tongue is fixed in my fall. You lay me in the dust of death. The dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircle me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves. And my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen, you have rescued me. I will tell you of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in a great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. 
May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Prosperity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. 